Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here, Mapple Insider, and today in this video, we are talking about Apple's plans to transition away from Intel to its own Apple created silicon, and what that means, and whether or not it is safe to buy a Mac now, or if you should hold off. So let's go ahead and just dive into this thing. First, let's look at the case for waiting and not buying a Mac now and holding off for Apple's own silicon-based Macs. So the biggest reason probably that we're gonna hear from people is the draw of being an early adopter. That's always been a thing with Apple products. Everyone wants the new iPhone, the new iPad, the new Apple Watch, whatever is new, people flock to. And we are seeing the same thing with these new Apple Silicon Macs. Everyone is all excited for these, regardless of what that means in terms of uh, you know, repercussions or the, the pitfalls of being an early adopter. So a lot of people are going to be just running to these sight unseen just because these are the first Apple Silicon Macs. So that's definitely a big reason and it cannot be overstated at how big of a reason that is. Now, going with these new Macs is not purely just because they're new and that's cool. There's a lot of real reasons why these machines could be a lot better than what we're seeing with Apple's existing, or existing Intel-based Macs. For starters, Apple has making great chips for a while now, and you're likely familiar with them. If you've used an iPad or an uh, Apple TV or an iPhone for the last several years, you've used Apple Silicon in those devices. Apple's A-series chips are incredible and constantly wipe out the Android competition on mobile because Apple's processes are incredibly more capable and exceedingly battery efficient and those same perks are likely going to be coming to the Mac. So those are big reasons why people may want to do that. Apple is going to be touting these machines like crazy. They are looking to really kind of back up their decision to abandon Intel and go with their own processors. So as they debut their first machines, they really want to just make a huge splash with these. They want to tout how much faster, how much battery more, how, more, how, mom, how much more battery efficient these machines are and it's going to be very tempting for those real perks as well as just the draw being that early adopter but at the same time there are negative consequences to being an early adopter think about apple's last butterfly uh, switch keyboard when that first came out with the touch bar macbook pros people were all excited for it. everyone jumped to those new machines and we all know what happened after that after that first macbook pro with butter butterfly switch keyboards the Subsequent models were much better. Apple made some substantial changes over the years after that first initial model. They made a ton of changes that really improved reliability. We saw it in the repair numbers. So that was a change over that first one and eventually abandoned that altogether going back to a tried and true scissor switch design. So anytime you're an early adopter, whether it's from Apple or any company, uh, you know, a new model car, anything like that, there's always going to be those things that just kind of need to get worked out after millions of people buy and start using them. So there may be bugs in the system kind of when you jump to those Macs for the first time. And that is a very good reason to hold out and not buy a new Apple Silicon Mac right away. Another reason why you may want to hold off is app support. Apps are going to have to take advantage of Apple's new software. Some apps may not run right away. They may still be running in an emulator and not running natively on those machines. So if you really want to get the most, you know, bang for your buck, the most out of those machines, running in an emulator may not be the best way to do that. And some may not run at all, depending on what needs to be done. So you have to kind of take that into consideration. Though, that said, Apple will likely want all the big players on board. We're likely to hear news about Office and Photoshop and all of those very shortly after launch. Finally, the last reason that you may want to just buy a Mac now is Apple recently updated a lot of their machines. We've seen new MacBook Airs and new 13-inch MacBook Pros, and Apple says it's going to take up to two years for this transition to complete. Quo says we're going to get the 13-inch Pro and the 13-inch Air as the first machines off the line with Apple Silicon. But if you want a 16-inch MacBook Pro, if you want a Mac Pro, if you want a Mac Mini, anything else that's not those, or even an iMac, if anything that's not that 13-inch Air and 13-inch Pro, you're not going to get it right away. You're going to be waiting at least until 2021, if not further. So if you want anything other than those two machines, there's a good reason just to buy now instead of holding out. If you do decide to buy a Mac now, you can rest easy that your machine is going to function for years. Apple, just because they're transitioning to its own silicon, does not mean they are banding support for Intel in the immediate future. There are millions of Macs running 
Intel processors right now, and Apple will continue to release new Intel-based Macs for the next up to two years. So Apple is still introducing these machines, and they're not going to introduce new Intel machines you know, now, like they just have with the 13-inch Pro and 13-inch Air, and they're not going to introduce new ones in the next two years with plans to drop support in a year or two, you know, after that. So Apple will be supporting these Intel-based Macs for many, many years down the line. And when you get to that many, many years down the line part, at that point, you'll start to see apps that are really focusing on the Apple Silicon, and there's going to be many more benefits to going with an Apple Silicon-based Mac, but the transition is going to be a slow one. Intel Macs are going to be around and working for many, many, many years. So you should feel confident that your machine is going to work and not just be DOA as soon as Apple makes the jump to its own silicon. Now, I want to hear what your guys' opinions are. This is going to be a huge transition. It's going to be a big deal, and there's going to be a lot of testing coming down the line from us. So let me know what you think over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you do want to get a Mac back now, you can find the best deals at the links down below in the description. Hey, everyone. Did you guys like that video? be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.